Welcome to all of you, wherever you are. Today is the third Sunday of Advent in Year C. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button to get all of our YouTube messages. If you're away from your faith, thank you for watching and joining us at our celebration. We are so glad that you're with us today. As a church, we're trying to stay connected to you, know that we miss you, and are praying for you. If you have not shared your email with our office, please do so. You will find messages in a bulletin and a daily reflection that will be sent to your email address and our parish Facebook page. Past message series can be seen on our YouTube channel, Most Holy Trinity Parish, Susquehanna County. This is the third week of a message series we are calling It's a Wonderful Life. We continue with our series on growing in gratitude. While ingratitude is incompatible with happiness, grateful people are happy people. We have noted that there are steps to gratitude, recognizing our gifts, turning our attention toward the giver, and expressing gratitude. These steps are simple, but not easy. They take discipline and dedication. They require focus and commitment. As we begin our Mass, center your heart for today's message. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray, O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exalt with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Cry, cry out, out with, with joy and gladness, gladness for among, among you is, is the, the holy great one, and holy, holy one, one of, Israel. of Israel. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. 
My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Cry Cry out out with joy joy and gladness, gladness, for among among you is the great and holy one one of Israel. Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. Cry Cry out out with with joy and and gladness, gladness, for for among you is the great and holy one one of Israel. Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry Cry out with with joy joy and gladness, gladness, for among you is the great and Holy One of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips to proclaim his holy gospel. They would have fathered his Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello everyone, welcome to Mass at Most Holy Trinity Parish. We're so great. Grateful to have you with us today. We're celebrating Gaudete Sundays. That means a rejoicing Sunday, Sunday of joy and hope. And the outward sign of that is the rose-colored vestments we're wearing. So not pink, but rose, and also the rose-colored candle on uh, the wreath. So a traditional, uh, joyful color. And the cause of our joy, the cause of our hope, 
is that in just a few days, we're going to be celebrating the birthday of the Messiah of Jesus, the Lord. Is that coming into our world is our cause for rejoicing. And you know, it is so uh, great to know that the Lord is near. He's not going to just, this isn't just going to be a celebration, kind of remembering something that happened 2,000 years ago. God is again sending grace from his son to us through the Holy Spirit. So there's going to be new grace and new gifts that God wants to give to his people. And so we really want to get ready for that through Advent so we can be really prepared for Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, uh, when it comes. You know, I talked a few weeks ago about a Mass I got to be part of at Yankee Stadium with Pope Benedict XVI and how I got to stand in the, out in the field on a Sunday afternoon right there at first base giving communion uh, to people. So what a great thing, being there in Yankee Stadium out on the field, Mass with the Pope and so many thousands of people and being able to distribute Holy Communion. So it was a great event. Well, the next day I noticed there's a picture on the front page of our local paper. That's a picture of the people in the stands, but it's a particular part, part of the stands. So one big block is all firefighters and rescue people in their uniforms. And then another huge block of, of the stadium is filled with all police. And a third large section is all the priests who were there to help with assisting at the mass, giving out Holy Communion. So I'm looking at this kind of close, I see all the, all the um, firemen and rescue workers are all looking off uh, in one direction. And I notice to all the police, they're all looking off in that same direction. And I look at all the priests and they're all looking out that same direction except for one. And that was me. I'm sitting there by myself looking the other way. What I was looking at, I don't really know, but out of all those people, I was the only one not uh, clued in. I think if Sister Carol, my first grade teacher, IHM sister, uh, were to look at that, she would say, well, he hasn't changed. She used to call me her daydreamer. Big, you know, kind of uh, easy getting off focus with things. That's my own thoughts, and that's where I kind of go. And so during this Advent season, it's really a time for us to kind of get our mind focused on the things of God, not to just be wandering off here and there, but to make sure we're coming back you know, to the Lord, looking again uh, to God. That's what John's message is all about. You know, John wants the people to get ready to be prepared to receive the Lord. And so he's out there in the desert and he's preaching and he's teaching, and he's calling them to a baptism of repentance. So they're going to do something that's normally reserved for Gentiles. They're gonna come into the Jewish community. They do that ceremonial washing or baptism and then they would continue with their instructions that would bring them in to the Jewish faith. And John said, you know, I think it'd be a good idea for us all to take this bath of repentance and, and get our focus again back on God. And so that's exactly what he decided to do. And he's preaching about lowering the, the mountains, filling in the valleys, making the crooked ways straight and the, uh, the rough ways smooth. He's uh, quoting the prophet Baruch. So Baruch was talking about doing all those things for the people to come back from exile to their own land. So God was going to build a highway for them so that it would not be a difficult journey. John is using the same language, but he's saying, let's do this by making this highway for the Messiah to come in a straight line uh, into our midst. And so that's what he wants to do. And so the conversion is taking down the mountains of sin and filling up maybe the valleys of the lack of charity that might be in the lives of the people. You know, St. John Paul II, he kind of had his own way of saying that we need to get our focus back on God. So he said that faith that doesn't become culture is a faith that has not been fully received. That's a faith that has not been fully embraced. It's a faith that has not been fully thought through. And so there's something lacking. You know, I have some knowledge in my head about my faith, but if it doesn't translate into action in my daily life, then there's a problem. And so my faith should be forming and informing everything I do every day. It's supposed to become my culture, in other words, my way of life. So there's gonna be things I'm gonna have in my life 
that other people won't have in theirs because they don't have a relationship with the Lord. They're not following the ways of his gospel. There's going to be other things in my life that are not going to be there that might be in the lives of other people because, again, my relationship with God and knowing his commandments and the gospel, I'm going to live in a particular way. And so that has to happen with individuals and in families, whole parishes, and even whole territories of the world where we live together as Catholic Christians. We need to have that culture, which means we're constantly growing. We're always striving to take the next step. We're trying to constantly get a deeper understanding and appreciation of the Lord in the scriptures and just really, literally everything that we do so that we can be easily identified in the world as somebody who's really a Christ follower, somebody who's really uh, with the Lord. And so John must have really gotten the attention of some people because they're asking, you know, what should we do? And he's already given them the message, now don't go taking it for granted, that because you're children of Abraham, you're going to be able to get into the kingdom automatically. He said God can raise up children for Abraham from these stones. And it's the same for us. We can't just say, well, I'm Catholic, I think I'm good, I had baptism, Holy Communion, Confirmation, I'm all set. I don't really have to do much else. So St. John Paul would say, no, that's not a good idea at all. You know, we can't just be static. We certainly can't go backward. We have to be moving ahead all the time in our faith. It's kind of one of the rules of the spiritual life. We're either going forward or backward. There's no real standing still. And so we want to be on that road where we're really following and serving the Lord. So what did John say to the people when they asked, what should we do? Well, with people like tax collectors, John had a pretty keen eye for areas where things were going wrong in people's lives. As we said to the tax collectors, don't take more than is prescribed. So they had the bad habit of collecting more, keeping it for themselves, and kind of robbing their neighbors in that way. So John wants them to stop that sin. For the soldiers, he points out too, don't extort any money from anyone, don't falsely accuse, be satisfied with your wages. Again, the preparation for the coming of the Messiah is going to be live in the faith, get rid of the sin. First of others, we didn't have those problems of the soldiers and the tax collectors. John said, whoever has an extra tunic, give it to somebody who doesn't have one. And those who have food should do the same or do likewise. And so other words, John is saying to them, these are faithful followers in the Jewish tradition who want to make sure they're ready when the, for the Messiah when he comes, that are coming to John to take on the preparation he's saying they ought to do to get there. And he's saying, you guys are already tithing. You're already giving your 10% back to God. It's their normal way of life at that time for those people. And so he's telling them, do something a little extra. You have them, maybe not everybody's going to be able to do it, but for the one who has the two tunics, you have another opportunity to give. For the one who has some extra food again, you have that opportunity. So for us here in the parish, we just went through the giving tree. You know, I gave my tithe for the month, added the 1%, that extra 1% we talked about uh, when we were talking about our giving. But I also got the gifts for the giving tree. And this was kind of fun. It was a kid wanted some board games. So I got a, a new model of Monopoly that I think is called Cheater's Monopoly. So they build in ways you can cheat, but if you get caught, they have handcuffs in the box. You have to wear the handcuffs. And then a couple other traditional uh, board games and some clothes. There's something fun uh, to go do, another way of giving. And John is saying, here's how we prepare. We're hearing about this coming and making sure we have a right focus. It's on the Lord. Uh, we're living the faith. We're getting rid of the sin. We're going to make sure there's no disconnect between the idea of the faith I have in my head, my identity as a Catholic, and the way I live. I want to make sure that that's going to be on the same page I'm really uh, living it. And maybe then as we move on, you know, we're hearing again from John about how we can give. Well, that's part of our clear pathway to discipleship, our tithing, or our sacrificial giving. So this time of the year, it's a great time to get into some kind of service, doing something for our neighbor, lots of opportunities as Christmas is coming up. Again, that sacrificial giving, entering into the small group so we can share faith with other faithful people. It could even be ecumenical. It could be people from another church that just want to talk about the Lord and all the good things that are happening right now in this 
a wonderful season of Advent. We want to pray like we're doing here at Mass. We want to pray at home. Make sure that's a real serious part of our daily life and then do what we can to share the faith because it's all about trying to reach those out there, other people who maybe don't have any relationship at all yet with the Lord. And this would be one of the best seasons to really kind of invite someone to come and see because Advent and Christmas are such joyful uh, seasons and people naturally feel drawn to those. But we also got to want to go down the road now for our to-do list, keep looking for those moments of gratitude. What do we have to be grateful for? Keep adding to that list. Identify those things we're grateful for. Acknowledge God as the giver and then take part in that act of giving thanks to God and maybe even sometimes to other people for the things that we have. And we're going to continue to focus on our journey down the road. First, we're headed to Christmas, but we know we're all together in the Lord's Church. That means we're all in the bark or the boat of St. Peter. And we all need to be doing the same kind of work, rowing in the same direction, so that at the end of our journey, we're going to find ourselves in the presence of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, together with all those who loved and served the Lord during this life, to live the joy and the peace and the new life we have in God forever. Together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, kind substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer to the Lord our prayers and petitions for the church, that we may experience joy through recognizing God with us each day and be instruments in helping others become aware of God's work in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For conversion of heart, that the fire of the Spirit will cleanse us of greed, selfishness, narrowness of mind, and hardness of heart, so that we may be people of the light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the advent of peace and justice, that God will give insight, vision, and courage to all who are striving to turn swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect and appreciation of children, born and unborn, and for the terminally ill, the elderly and the handicapped, that they may be welcomed, reverenced, and protected from all harm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hand on the faith to our next generation, that they may effectively lead those entrusted to them to a deeper knowledge and love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for an end to the COVID pandemic, that God will subdue the virus, heal the sick, and give strength to all who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for the sick and the dying, especially those with cancer and COVID-19 virus, and all who are on a prayer list, that God will touch their bodies and spirits with tenderness and healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this community of faith and our silent prayers. For most holy Trinity Parish, that we have a greater unity in the church, and we may be one in faith, one in hope, and one in the peace of the Holy Spirit. And for all who have died, our family members, our friends, and our fellow parishioners, that God will open wide the door for them and welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of Al and Thomas Mahalik, for whom this Mass is being offered, may the Lord grant them eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear these and all the prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, O Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace at our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now invite Brian to present the antidotes. We learn that study after study shows there's no practice more effective at increasing your happiness and well-being than practicing radical gratitude. While practicing gratitude is key to increasing our happiness, we often forget to do it, especially during the Christmas season. Last week, we looked at obstacles to growing in gratitude. Two obstacles can get in the way of seeing our blessings, big problems and little problems. Faith is thanking God in advance of the blessings, that he is using those problems to change and transform our character. When it comes to smaller problems, or what Jesus called the daily anxieties of life, we can remain grateful by seeing the blessings behind the burdens. Faith is seeing the blessings behind the burdens. In this week's Gospel of Luke, we are asked to prepare the way of the Lord. God wants us to give to him first, off the top. The Bible talks about giving to the poor. John describes this kind of giving is coming from what's extra. Thank you for joining us at our celebration of Mass today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.